In CSS, every HTML element, whether it's text, images, headings, or sections, is treated as a box. This box consists of four parts, content, padding, border, and margin. The margin is the space outside the box that separates it from other elements. The border is an optional line that goes around the padding and is often used for design purposes. The padding is the space inside the box, surrounding the content, which ensures the content doesn't touch the edges. Lastly, the content is the actual text or image, defined by the element's width and height. Now, let's see. Let's create a div with a class of card. Inside it, we add an H2 and a P tag. Now we add a background color to the card, and you'll see the result. You'll also notice some spacing. That's because browsers add default margin and padding using their user agent styles. To reset that, we'll use the universal selector asterisk and set both margin and padding to zero. Now the extra space outside the box is gone, but you'll still see some space between the H2 and P. That's because they're block-level elements. They stack vertically and have default spacing. Let's highlight this. We'll set a red background on the H2 and a green background on the P. Now you can clearly see how each element behaves like a box. Now I right-clicked on the browser and selected Inspect to open the developer tools. You can see the styles applied to the card. In the Styles panel, you can temporarily change CSS values, but they won't be saved. When you reload the page, the values reset to what's written in the CSS file. Next, go to the Computed tab. Here you'll see the box model, which shows the content, padding, border, and margin of the selected element. Now let's add padding to the card. Padding top, 10 pixels. Padding right, 20 pixels. Padding bottom, 30 pixels. And padding left, 40 pixels. Padding is applied inside the box, surrounding the content you'll see these padding values update in the box model. We can also use shorthand padding. For example, padding, 10 pixels, 20 pixels, 30 pixels, sets the top to 10 pixels, left and right to 20 pixels, and bottom to 30 pixels. Check the box model for this value. Another example is padding, 20 pixels, 30 pixels, which sets the top and bottom to 20 pixels, and left and right to 30 pixels. You can also see this value in the box model. Finally, padding, 20 pixels, sets 20 pixels, padding on all four sides. All of these changes are clearly visible in the box model section of the browser's developer tools. We set a margin of 30 pixels on the top and bottom, and 20 pixels on the left and right. Just like padding, margin can be written using longhand or shorthand. Margin is applied outside the box to create space between elements. You'll see the margin values clearly in the box model. Next, we add a 5-pixel solid gray border to the card, which is also visible in the box model. Then, we apply a 10-pixel border radius to round the corners. This border radius is also reflected in the box model. We set the card's width to 300 pixels and height to 200 pixels. You can see these values in the box model. The content, padding, border, and margin are all clearly visible. The actual width starts at 300 pixels. Then we add 20 pixels of left and right padding, 5 pixels borders, and 20 pixels margins on both sides. The same applies to the height. It starts at 200 pixels, and then the top and bottom padding, borders, and margins are added. To calculate the total space the element takes up on the page, use the formulas. Total width equals width plus left-right padding plus left-right border plus left-right margin. Total height equals height plus top slash bottom padding plus top slash bottom border plus top slash bottom margin. By default, the box sizing property is set to content box. In this mode, you won't see any change in the element size because the padding and border are not included in the specified width and height. However, when we change it to border box, the padding and border are included inside the set width and height. You'll notice the layout adjusts, and the element stays at 300 by 200 while still including the padding and border. Keep in mind that the margin is not included in this size. It remains outside the box, even when using border box. If we don't use box sizing, border box, the width and height apply only to the content. 
Padding and border are added outside, increasing the total size. But with box sizing, border box, the 200 pixels includes the content, padding, and border. Margin is not included. This keeps the element's size consistent by fitting everything within the set dimensions. Let's talk about margin collapse. Suppose we add a second card and give the first one a class called Card 1. In the Universal Selector, we set Box Sizing Border Box for all elements. Now, if both cards have margin, 30 pixels, 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 20 pixels, you might expect the vertical space between them to be 60 pixels, 30 pixels from the bottom of the first card, and 30 pixels from the top of the second. However, due to margin collapse, when the vertical margins of two elements meet, only the larger margin is applied. Now, I'll set a high vertical margin of 40 pixels on card 1. You'll notice equal spacing on the top and bottom because the maximum margin of 40 pixels is applied. This is known as margin collapse. A quick tip to center a card horizontally is to set the left and right margins to auto. Finally, to add space between the AND, we'll apply margin bottom colon 10 pixels to the heading.